For it TV, the world is thinking. One of the stories we tell in Standing Up to the Madness is about uh, some of the most tenacious and courageous freedom fighters in this country. These are people you would not want to meet in a dark alley if you were trying to hijack somebody's civil liberties. And uh, of course, I could only be talking about our nation's librarians. <laughs> <laughs> Um, these, uh, for, this story takes place in the rough and tumble suburbs of Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> um, and uh, not far from the uh, state capitol, uh, the offices of the Library Connection. It's a small nonprofit organization that exists to manage the public computer systems of 27 different. Uh, public libraries uh, in the suburbs of Hartford. And uh, for those of you who perhaps haven't been in the library lately, uh, the use, the free use of public computers and the internet is a, a very big uh, service that local libraries provide now. Well, one day there was a knock at the door and the executive director of the organization, a man named George Christian, uh, was told the two gentlemen wanted to see him. Now, this happened periodically. People showed up looking for the latest Harry Potter book, and he had to explain, no, you need to go down the road to the public library. We're just this back office, essentially. Well, the two men at the door knew exactly where they were. One wore a tight black t-shirt. The other wore a business suit. And uh, they came bearing a letter. But this was no ordinary letter. And they handed it to George Christian and uh, ordered him to read it in their presence. And George peered through his bifocals at this letter. And it explained that they were demanding all information and all identifying information on all users of all 27 public libraries uh, managed by the Library Connection for a particular day a few months earlier. They were FBI agents. And they identified themselves as special agents from the uh, FBI Hartford office. Um, one of the agents then reached over and with his finger pointed to one line in particular, kind of like the children's librarian at story hour when she really wants to make sure you're following along. It was the line that said, you are ordered to comply with the agent's demand and you can tell no one of this investigation and uh, it was not even clear whether you could call a lawyer for this. Um, this would be secret, break this gag order, and you're subject to fines and jail time. So George Christian looks up from the letter and looks at the FBI agents and he says, I believe this is unconstitutional and I'm not gonna give you anything. The agents kind of look at him in the way that a predator sizes up its prey. And <laughs> sort of that pitying, uh, uh, you know, head wagging, you know, essentially telling him, you have no idea what you're about to take on here. They hand him a business card and say, you better think about what you're doing here, sir, and get back to us immediately. Well, George retires to his office and uh, slumps back in his chair, and he's thinking, oh, my God, I am about to take on the entire national security state of George Bush's America. What am I going to do? And he thinks, well, if I'm going to do this, do this job right, I'm going to need at least three other librarians. <laughs> <laughs> and so the call goes out to the executive committee of the Library Connection, which consists of three librarians who volunteer their time to help run this little uh, computer enterprise. Peter Chase is one of the librarians. Amy and I met him at his library, the Plainville Public Library. He's like a proud parent showing us around there. But on this day, Peter gets a very strange call. And it's from George Christian saying, uh, we're having an emergency meeting of the Library Connection first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, you need to be here. You need to not tell anybody where you're going, why you're coming here. <laughs> and you should clear your calendar for the next few months. And Peter gets off the phone and thinks, 
emergency meeting of the library connection? <laughs> Has an adult book been misfiled in the children's section? <laughs> Is it another catcher in the rye complaint? <laughs> Anyway, he does what he t he's told. They show up the library connection along with two other librarians there. And uh, George pulls out this letter. It is called a National Security Letter. And these are under the USA Patriot Act, uh, can be issued by very low level uh, policemen. Essentially, an FBI agent is a federal cop, uh, the corner cop, but the federal version of it. And there's no judge's oversight required. So, um, Upon showing the other librarians this letter, they are, it's like being exposed to radiation. They're all contaminated, they're all gagged. And so the librarians, mild-mannered people that they are, decide there's only one thing to do in response to this letter, and that's to fight like hell. And so they file suit against the Attorney General of the United States of America. <laughs> and the case proceeds, and they are, of course, anonymous. They cannot be identified, and so it, it, the case becomes known as John Doe, Connecticut versus Gonzalez. <laughs> it proceeds into the courts, and the librarians are very excited. Of course, you know, as we learned in round about sixth grade, they will have their day in court. On the eve of going to the federal court in Bridgeport, Connecticut, they get a call from their lawyers saying, well, not so fast. Uh, you have been branded a threat to national security by the Bush administration. Uh, you are not allowed to appear at your own trial. And so they are told the closest they'll get to their trial is two hours away at another federal courthouse in Hartford. But they can watch it on closed circuit TV. And so the view they have of the courtroom is the view that we have of you. It's a camera over the shoulder of the judge. They can't see much, but there are two things, all important things that they can see. First of all, here they are alone, feeling somewhat terrified uh, as they're taking this case on. The camera looks out and they see a sea of librarians. <laughs> the cavalry has arrived. <laughs> the other thing they see is a man who had been going around the state assuring people and debating none other than Peter Chase, who was the head of the Intellectual Freedom Committee of the Connecticut Library Association. He had been assuring them that, uh, of course, the Patriot Act was not being used against librarians. It was the U.S. Attorney for Connecticut, Kevin O'Connor, who later was rewarded for his uh, zeal by becoming the Chief of Staff to Alberto Gonzalez before uh, Gonzalez was thrown overboard. Um, Anyway, this case winds its way on. The government inadvertently uh, reveals the identity of Peter Chase when it releases documents and fails to redact his name. And in the end, the librarians fight and they fight and they fight. Uh, what was really going on was that the Patriot Act was up for reauthorization in front of Congress. This was early 2006. The librarians thought Congress would like to know that it was being used to spy on patrons and harass librarians, but they had been gagged. The Patriot Act got passed, and six weeks later, the librarians received another letter, this one not so radioactive, and it was telling them that the government was dropping the case. And so they became the only four people in America who could speak about the experience, how the Patriot Act was being used and these gag orders. And they have been speaking ever since, but it was an opportunity for us in this book to bring them to an audience. They've been speaking to a lot of librarians. They're rock stars among librarians. Yeah. Um, but uh, to share these stories, and uh, I think the people in our book who would be most surprised about who we write about are the people themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly these librarians feel yeah. that way.